It's my first one today. There stands the glass. I'm unstoppable because I'm optimistic. That's why they call me the unstoppable Ted Hawkins. Because I feel that as long as life lasts and death passes, there's hope. Hope is the mother of all men. Ted Hawkins was a busker from Venice Beach, California. What's a busker? Slang, the street musician, artist, performer. You need three things to be a successful busker. A good location, a crowd, and of course, talent. Busking was not an easy way to make a living, but it was all Ted knew. From 10 in the morning to 8 in the evening, every weekend, Ted would be out on Venice Beach Boardwalk in what he called his spot sucking down sand and hustling for enough spare change to feed his family. But what set Ted apart from other buskers was that enormous voice which seemed to erupt from the very core of his being. Ted would sing of his life's experience with an utterly raw simplicity. However, surviving on the streets was anything but simple, particularly if you were a black man born into abject poverty in rural Mississippi in the late 1930s. I was born in Lakeshore, Mississippi. It's a small town that the train don't even stop. It's so little. My daddy wanted a girl. I became a boy and he split. My mother, she was an alcoholic and a prostitute. I had to fend for myself. There was never nobody there to say, Ted, don't do this. Ted, don't do that. This is wrong, Ted. That's wrong, you see. Um, children that's got a mother and a father, they don't know how wonderful it is and what a great thing they have. I had to raise myself from a child. This wouldn't be happening if my daddy was home. No school to borrow and no love. Come help my mother and don't let her die. I am a big boy and I'm not supposed to cry. Go get my daddy and bring him back home. We are the lost ones living all alone. We are the we are the most When I'm scared and my back is against the wall, I'm at my best. I was at a school uh, place uh, my mother put me in uh, called Oakland Training School. Uh, for little bad boys, and um, a man was there by the name of Professor Longhair. He used to love to hear me play the ham bone, you know, beat the ham bone, you know, he, he said, and I'd beat it for him, and they would see crowds of children gathered around me, and they found out that I was singing to them, Miss William, and uh, Professor Longhair put me in her little group, singing group, and took me to Jackson, Mississippi, which was 24 miles from that Oakley training school where I was. And I was afraid to go out because of the people. I froze, you know, when they called my name. And Miss Weaver gave, gave me a shell. And I'm glad she did now. I've been singing ever since. I tore the house down. That felt good to me. I liked it. And I, I wanted some more of that, but I didn't know how to go oh, about getting it again. Down around Biloxi, big girls are swimming in the sea. Oh, they look like 
sisters in the ocean The boy will fill his pail with salted water And the sides red full for New Orleans When I was a child, I would fish. That's one thing about Biloxi. You know, I'd go down to the beach and I'd, um, I'd get me old, old crab and net and I'd put some meat in the middle. i let my uh, net all the way down to, to the bottom, leave about a half hour, come back and it's full of crabs. And I'd take them to the house and boil them and i eat them. Stars can see Biloxi stars can find their faces in the sea and we're walking in the evening by the ocean we are splashing naked in the water And the sky is red from off toward New Orleans. And the sky is red from off toward New Orleans. And the sky is red from off toward New Orleans. In the sky. From off toward New Orleans, and the sky is red from off toward New Orleans, and the sky is red from off toward New Orleans. It was about 15 years of age, and I, I broke in a place. Uh, a Harlem Davis motorcycle shop. I went to a place called Parchman Penitentiary for 31 months and nine days. And that was hell. It's worse than that. Yes, a boss. Yes, a boss. Put them off here, boss. Wiping it off, boss. You better say something. Yeah, shoot your hand. Putting my hat back on, boss. Straighten it out here, boss. Wiping my glasses off, boss. That's all I'm doing. Wiping it off, boss. And everything you say, you better put boss on the end of it. You know, and when he call you, you run and slide on your knee with your hat off. Oh, sir. My birth at home, friends standing round, tears in their eyes. They know that I am about to die, but I'm not worried, I'm not afraid. I know you do, Jesus, just what you say. You promised me that if I live right, you'd be with me, Lord. I'm not afraid, they said I'm dying, don't leave me now, oh Lord, I know you stand by me when I'm in trouble, when I'm in misery, in more than my dying hour, stay with me Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, I know you stand by your word whenever I call you. I'm sure he knew the Lord, because you hear it. That's his gift. His voice and his talent was his gift from the Lord. He sang from his heart. He, see, he reached me. And uh, when you, you sing from your heart, you reach the other person's heart. I was walking along the promenade one day, and there was Ted. And I uh, sat down and I started listening to him, and his voice uh, 
I really believed that it was kind of like a channeling from up above because my head was screaming. All I wanted to do was use and listening to him gave me, uh, gave me some hope. And I told him, I said, Ted, you know, I'm in a bad place. I, uh, I'm trying to kick alcohol and drugs. And he looked at me and he said, you just sit there and listen and I'll make you feel better. I hope somebody here, whosoever is under the sound of my voice, I hope, I hope they hear me. Whosoever is come out here angry and mad and want to kill themselves, I hope, I hope they hear it. One lady whispered in my ear and said, don't stop singing, you're healing me. Hopping box cars, back in those days, I think they called it something like Hoboy. I started in 57, when I left Biloxi, Mississippi. I was trying to get to um, the north, you know, where it's better living for blacks. Would you guys help me with you this? Know. Praise God, praise God, praise God. God, praise 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 God. At first, I went, all, I, I went down the map and wound up in Tallahassee, Florida. But um, they told know. me to say, the east is back the other way, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> so I started climbing that map, you know, very slowly. And um, walking, hitchhiking, you know, and hitting the, um, the um, when the sun starts going down, you're in no man's land, you know, and you got to get somewhere. I kept on walking until I, I come to a yard, a freight yard. The uh, train was beginning to move slowly and I started running. You know, with the last little ounce of strength that I had, I ran faster, 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 and I'm running. Now it's too fast. I leaped and caught it. And it, there was no boxcars open. 
So I clammed up, you know, and the, the wind started hitting me in the face. It was already cold. And I started running and jumping from one box car to the other. I stayed laying on my belly all night. And I saw daybreak. And I, I, I remember coming into the freight yard and uh, something said, stand up, stand, stand up. I could, I could hear that stand up with the wind, the urge to stand up and I wouldn't, something wouldn't let me get up. And about a minute later, that was those, um, those, those, those wires from one end of the other was, was it would have cut my neck off. It, it, uh, it, it would have hit me and knocked me off. Something wouldn't allow me to get up. Somebody somewhere was taking care of me. Who do you love? Who do you love now? Who do you really, really, really love? Who do you love? Who do you love? Who do you really, really, really love? Who do you love? Who do you love now? Who do you really, really, really love? Who do you love? Who do you love? Who do you really, really, really Sometimes up and I'm sometimes down Sometimes I'm almost to the ground I promised the Lord I wouldn't lie down in sin The next thing I knew I up and done it again But I know who I love, I know who I love I know who I really, really, really love I know who I love, I know who I love I know who I really, really, really love who do you love? Who do you love? Who do you really, really, really love? Who do you love? Who do you love? Who do you really, really, really love? Ow! Who do you love? Who do you love? Who do you really, really, really love? Who do you love? Who do you love now? Who do you really, really, really love? I love Jesus, I love Jesus, yes, I love Jesus, that's who I love. Has anyone ever mentioned um, Lead Belly in terms of, of Ted Hawkins? Interestingly, Ted wouldn't talk about Lead Belly or other blues artists. He didn't want to be perceived Mm. as the inheritor yeah. of that tradition, though he clearly was. Ted uh, was simply one more person like myself uh, who loved music and loved uh, a good musical idea wherever it came from. I don't really go by uh, for calling people a folk singer or a gospel singer. It's all folk. I call Ted a street singer, just I call myself a river singer. I'm not a blues man. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not a blues man per se. You see, uh, uh, blues is not a, a music. Blues is a feeling and an experience. Anybody can have the blues. I have a John Lee Hooker. I'm, I'm, I'm not the John Lee Hooker or the Muddy Water type. You know? I just might sing a country and western. You know? I don't want to just stay on blues because if you say stay on blues, then uh, the people start getting uh, you know, bored. If I was a blues man, I wouldn't have anything else to offer you but blues all night long. And I think that somebody should sing, uh, happy days are here again, you know, and everything's gonna be all right, then just crying the blues all the time, you know what I mean? I had a strange conversation My baby called me on the phone She said that your next lover's gonna be the blues Cause daddy I'm gonna be gone Days gonna be dark as the night And things just won't be going just right Dearest, the one 
green on your throne. Oh, don't ever leave me alone. For without your touch, I have no love. I'd have no love. That's why I wanna say, baby, 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 long and hold you near. Can't you hear? Then all the sweet things that I wanna whisper in your ear. Because love is gold, and the only thing you got to do, girl, is just to come on back home, baby, yeah. Where you belong, where you belong. I was uh, in Geneva, New York, and I um, got sick and tired of um, the snow being knee deep, you know, and the rain and the slurs, and did that get hard and you fall on your butt? And um, asked the lady at the ticket office, where on earth can I go where it don't get cold? And she said, Los Angeles, California, to give me a one-way ticket. Ted had always sung in church choirs and stayed close to his love for gospel music. But the spontaneous decision to come to Los Angeles would change his life forever. It was there that he met and married Elizabeth Eccles, who became his spiritual support through the harsh reality that was Ted's life. He soon learned a most valuable lesson, that he could do his own music in his own way, and in the process, he made up something that was just Ted Hawkins. Baby, 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 what's wrong? So sad and disappointed, I don't know what to do. Listen to me. Brother. I went to a place called RCA, and I said, I know uh, lots of songs, you know, uh, by Sam Cook. Uh, can I sing? He said, Ted, we don't need another Sam C Cook. Why don't you write your own stuff? I said, Man, I can't write. He said, Yes, you can. Never say I can't. So I said, All right, I can. Went home and wrote a song called Baby. Baby, 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 come on home. Baby, ooh, baby, I didn't mean to treat you wrong. I'm gonna sit down and search myself. Maybe this could be my fault. I remember last night we had a fight. She told me everything was lost. I fell asleep, I had one too many This morning I found a note It read many happy hangovers to you, my love You won't hear my complaining no more Baby, 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 come on home Baby, ooh, baby, come back where you I was singing downtown Los Angeles. And um, I saw other folks singing, and the uh, Jehovah Witness people, they was holding up banners you know, and stuff like that, and, but the people were steady moving on. And I, I started doing my singing and stuff like that. The people stopped, and the crowd backed out into the street. And so the police saw that and what's happening down there and, so, and came and, saw, and made me move. I said, well, where in the devil can I go? And somebody said, well, why don't you go to Venice Beach, Ted? I said, where is Venice Beach? What is the Venice Beach? And he says, uh, uh, just get the Venice bus, RTD, and ride until you get to the end, end of the line, and that'll be Venice Beach. I said, all right. So I did that, and I took my guitar and came out here, and I said, my goodness, look at the big crowd. Look at the crowd. 
look at the money, you know? I say, my gracious. And I stop around Thornton, somewhere right down there. I'm looking at Thornton right now. I'll never forget Thornton. Oh man, this is my last time out here, but uh, every time I look at this place, I, I swallow hard, man. Because uh, I remember, you know, those days. It might be one o'clock and it might be three. Time don't mean that much to me. I ain't felt this good since I don't know when. But I might not feel this good again. So come on, give me a good time roll. We don't stay here till we soothe our soul. If it ain't no mess around with Sam Cooke's song, you, you mess it up. Sam Cooke is the greatest singer in the world. He's the only one that could cause my heart to, to flutter and, and, and the little chill bumps to come on my arm, you know, when I hear him sing. It seemed like a, something tickled you behind the neck. I could see um, Ted falling in love with Sam Cooke and the Soulsters. You know, actually, they were coming up around the same time and all of the young men were Sam Cooke, Sam Cooke. But, um, I can understand him being influenced by Sam, but actually I hear uh, 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 Ted, his own style. And that's very important, to have your own style. Uh, there's, your, there's your cayenne there's pepper. There's cayenne pepper. The cayenne pepper water. Is that something you picked up in Europe? I don't know where I got that. I think it was Europe. Yeah. And the, the glove thing <laughs> just, just sent me into outer space. I just thought, well, of course he was playing with a glove. I got to put my, my glove on. I just strum. And uh, I have to have a cushion. But you play it with so much force. Mm, I squeeze so hard. Yeah. The harder you squeeze, the better tune you get. I've always had to do things the hard way. It's the story of my life. Yeah. One of the things I loved about him was that he was, I mean, beyond the voice, Ted had this paraphernalia. I mean, he had, he had his milk crate, he had his guitar with his name on it, he had his little piece of metal in his boot that he would tap on a, on a slab of wood, and he had uh, this incredibly long acrylic thumbnail. Since you're gone, the bright lights are dim. People all seem the same. They're so used to seeing us together. Never mind. I've been searching, not knowing what I find. I search for something that I have all the time. And to think that I've treated you so bad. I got what I wanted, but I lost everything I had. I got what I wanted, but I lost everything I had. I got what I wanted, but I lost everything I had. When I was walking out here yesterday, I saw everybody busting. My heart went out to them. Mm. Because little do they know they're gonna to have to sit there for a long, long time. Look like there's an unseen force, an unseen spirit somewhere that you gotta pay your dues. You're not getting nowhere, you're not gonna do nothing until you pay your dues. And I don't care how you try. Before you know it, years have gone by, you know and you're paying your dues. Ted Hawkins' life seemed like a never-ending debt. With the release of his first record, Baby, in 1966, he had hopes that success might come his way and break the cycle of poverty. The song became a regional radio hit in Southern California. However, as was the business of the day, the record label that apparently supported black artists and their music assured Ted that there were no royalties to be had. Penniless and despondent, back out on the street, 
Ted sank to the depths of a nervous breakdown. Over the next several years, he drifted in and out of mental institutions and jailhouses. In 1971, Ted got a second chance at the ladder of success. Producer Bruce Bromberg, who discovered Ted singing in the front of a liquor store, took Ted into the studio to record the LP, Watch Your Step. Ted's frustrations mounted as the record sat on the shelf for over 10 years until its release in 1981 by the Roots-based Rounder Records. Not only was Watch Your Step honored with a rare five-star review in Rolling Stone, but it has been cited as one of the best rock and roll records of all time. The way America works for a record like that to be lost for 10 years probably is not nearly as surprising as it should be. I think what's astonishing is, in some ways, that Ted not only got discovered in 1971 and rediscovered in 81 and then rediscovered again in the 90s, that this just kept happening because there was, a, again, there was a force there that came out of him, that came out of the music, that came out whatever the music put through him. Watch your step. People wrongly attribute the you know, discovery of Ted Hawkins to me. And that's, I mean, I first heard Ted Hawkins on the John Peel program. I was uh, huddled around this fire one night listening to Peel. And then all of a sudden, this voice just cut through. And it was that thing, what the hell is this? Who is it? And it was what she said. and said, who is this bloke? Because he was quite clearly in jail on the sleeve, right? I'll show you. Uh, behind bars. And uh, so I said, is he alive, dead? Is he in jail? Is he at large? So they said, oh, yeah, he's uh, alive and he's at large. And he's living in Los Angeles. But don't go anywhere near him. He's completely mad. And I said, in what way, mad? They said, oh, well, just, Ted just doesn't live in the same world as us. Which is perfectly true, but he's certainly not mad. But they made him sound dangerous. Uh, made him sound all the more attractive, can I say. So w within, about, within about a month, I was in Nashville doing some filming for, for television, and I was due to fly home. And uh, I was at Nashville airport, and I thought, oh, stuff this. And uh, I just went up to the, the desk of one of the airlines and said, give me a ticket to Los Angeles. And uh, I had his address from Rounder, and I just went out and knocked on his door. And what was his reaction? It was, it, well, he was a bit puzzled uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, a, and a bit... And, it's, and he kept telling me all throughout the afternoon, I hear there's a guy in England who's playing my records on the radio. I look in the mirror each morning Whiskers growing on my face But what do I care about the whiskers, baby? I'm very, very happy about being in this country. I feel like as if I've died and have gone to a, another dimension. It never occurred to me that I was going to leave my country and come over here. Because um, in America, you've got to stay 19. You know, otherwise, they put you out of pasture. You get a certain feeling, you know, a real good feeling. And, and you know, somehow you know that this is it. It's a good feeling. Um, things, everything seemed to be happening at once. I couldn't wear the 
And this here's Ted Hawkins. And I want to let you know that this is my film, my way. So many other groups take me on the beach and they do all the talking and I don't get a chance to say nothing. I want to let you guys know that there's more to Ted Hawkins than just singing. My busking days are over. Ted and I um, toured quite extensively around Great Britain. He was a, a man who, who uh, you know, performed as he went along, you know, I think he, uh, he, I think he realised he was a larger-than-life character, and um, he certainly, uh, you know, he, he sort of, that's the way he was, whether he was on the bus or on stage. There, there are aspects of, the, of, of his performance that, that were above and beyond buskering. Like, um, for instance, he used to, in his dressing room, he used to warm up like a boxer, and he'd go on with a towel over his head, you know, and we used to sort of, like, really get into this, and we'd sort of, like, clap him on out of the dressing room and stuff like that. Come on, Ted, it's time to go, man. And he'd have a towel over his head, and now he'd... Well, he'd be going like that. I mean, I've never seen anybody else do it like that. And whether he was just joking with us kids or whether that's the way he was, I never did work out. But I think that for, for Ted, there was no line really between performing and being Ted. Like, you just did it. No, 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 no,